Hello, Elijah here. In this video, I'm going to be showing the new native NeoVim inlay hints feature. As a side note, what I'm about to show has not been released in an official stable release. I'm showing a feature from the nightly build. There are several ways you could try out a nightly build. I personally prefer using the Bob version manager for NeoVim, if that sounds interesting to you. And you'd like to see a video about it, please leave a note in the comments below. So what is exactly an inlay hint? Glad you asked. Let's take a look. If we were to start typing some code, Lua in this case, you would start to see some autocomplete prompts showing helpful information from your LSP, assuming that you have that set up. And you might have set up in your config a way to see helpful LSP info for existing code with a helpful mapping, like capital K, for example. However, what about looking at existing code from a glance? How can I quickly see more context to method parameters? Well, that is where inlay hints become helpful. In this case, I could toggle on inlay hints and easily see that the first argument is mode, the second is LHS, and so on. And if I don't want to clutter the buffer, I could toggle it back off. So let's revert my changes and start from scratch. I'm using a fresh install of the kickstart.nvim distro as our starting point. And I'll launch the configuration to make the changes. If you find that interesting, you are welcome to view my other videos showing how to install numerous configs and swap between them. OK, back to the changes. I'll open up the init.lua file and then search for the lua underscore ls to find the section that defines the settings for the lua LSP, language server protocol. Here, I'll add hint equals enable equals true, which turns on inlay hints for lua files. And I'll save our buffer, and then source our current file, even though lazy.mvim says it's not supported. Just ignore that. <laughs> OK, and so now let's search for vim.keymap.set, and then back up one match. From here, let's briefly look up the help for inlay hint. In the docs, the method expects two arguments, a buffer handle and an enabled flag. So let's close the help and give that a try. One way to get the buffer handle is to use the buffers command. And you can see that our buffer number is 1. Or you could print out the results from the Lua vim.api.nvim underscore git underscore current underscore buff method. Whew, that's a long one. Again, the buffer is number 1. And then we could pass the buffer number to the Lua vim.lsp.inlay hint method. And in this case, we'll pass true as the enabled Boolean to turn on inlay hints. And boom, there are inlay hints in our buffer. And if we try that again, but flip true to false, then we could turn off the inlay hints. Alternatively, instead of finding the buffer number, we could pass zero to indicate the current buffer, and we'll turn on the inlay hints. And finally, we can pass nil as the enabled flag to indicate to toggle the current state. And boom. OK, now that we can do this manually, let's set up a key mapping for easier use. I'll hop down and paste a little snippet defining a key map only if my version of NeoVim supports the inlay hint feature. And we'll create a key map in normal mode using the leader UH mapping to trigger vim.lsp dot inlay hint, passing zero to indicate the current buffer and nil to toggle to the next state, and a description in case you're using some type of which key plugin. And I'll save the buffer and source the current file. Shh, don't tell. And then I'll try my new fancy key map to toggle inlay hints on and off again. OK, so next I'll show how to set up inlay hints for TypeScript inside of a kickstart.nvim distro. But first, if you found this content helpful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up so it could spread to more people. Thank you. Oh, and also I'll be showing how to set up Lua and TypeScript also in the LazyVim distro afterwards, so stick around. Now let's switch gears to add TypeScript support. So we'll go back to the LSP section and uncomment the TS server entry. If we now switch to a TypeScript project using my newly updated Kickstart config, you'll find that nothing happens once we try to toggle on the inlay hints feature with our key map. 
So let's go back to our kickstart config once again and add some settings to TS Server. The values in this section are taken from the TypeScript language server repo. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to look at the definitions and values for yourself. And I went ahead and defined these for both JavaScript and TypeScript, but you could adjust them separately. And now we can switch back over to our TypeScript project, open up API.ts, and we can toggle the inlay hints feature. Yay! Okay, now let's focus on LazyVim. I'll launch a fresh install of LazyVim and open up the Lua config lazy.lua file. The Lua LSP is already set up, like in kickstart.mvim. But let's uncomment the TypeScript extra plugin that defines the LSP and associated configurations. Then I'll add a new file to the plugins folder, and let's call it lsp.lua, but it could be whatever you want. LazyVim will auto source any file in this folder. And inside our file, we'll return telling the nvim lsp config plugin to enable the inlay hints option. What that really means in this case is that LazyVim will look at the flag, and if it's enabled, and the features enabled in NeoVim, and the features supported for the attach LSP, then inlay hints will be turned on for that buffer. So to actually get this to work, we'll need to add the LSP specific config that we did previous. I'll add a special servers key here and define the Lua underscore LS server and provide the settings from before. So if I save these settings and flip over to use these LazyVim settings and open a Lua file, you'll see that I can indeed toggle inlay hints on and off. Okay, one last bit. Let's get TypeScript inlay hints working for LazyVim as well. We'll switch back over to our lsp.lua file in our LazyVim config and add a new TS server entry with settings for TypeScript and JavaScript, much like we did for the kickstart mvim config. And now I'll save my changes and then kick up my LazyVim config inside a TypeScript project, then pull up the api.ts file. And here, as before, I can toggle inlay hints on and off using my leader uh key map. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. And again, until NeoVim version 0.10 is launched, you'll need to use a nightly version in order for this to work. But there are several ways you can do that. If you'd like a video showing a NeoVim version manager to make that easier, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep learning.